everyone, my name is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. It is Friday, November 1st, and it is time for another reading vlog, and that is going to be for Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass. I am so, so stoked to be starting this reading vlog and to be reading this book right at the beginning of the month. I kind of wanted to start as early as possible to try to get this vlog up in the next week or so. So, Kingdom of Ash, this is the seventh and final installment in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas and this is a series that has quickly become one of my all-time favorites to be honest. I just love it so much. The characters, the story, I love Sarah J Maas's writing style and if you are interested I have a whole playlist on my channel of my other reading vlogs that I have been doing for this series. The only other book in the series that I didn't do a reading vlog for was for The Assassin's Blade but some people don't really consider that to be a part of the series because that is like a prequel novella bind up. But just to tell you guys where I'm at, I am not very far in this book. I am on page 75 and that is chapter 7 and this is quite a brick of a book. It doesn't look like it because the pages are very thin but this is an almost 1000 page book so it will definitely take me quite a while to read this. I'm hoping though to get this done in about a week or so. I'm also hoping to be able to read at least 100 pages a day but ideally I would like to read about 150 pages a day which I think is very doable. Also just kind of as a warning I do not talk about major spoilers in these vlogs but I do talk about characters and their relationships with one another so I guess that could be considered minor spoilers but I promise that I will not reveal anything super spoilery in this vlog. So we do have quite a few POVs in this book so far and I kind of predicted that just based on how the series has been going up to this point. So right now we're following like Lysandra and Adian and Terrison. We're also following um, Kale and Yurin um, as they are now coming back to Otterlon from um, Antica and the Southern Continent. Uh, we are also following Rowan, Lorcan, um, Elid, and they have someone else with them, um, Gavriel. And they are, I believe, in Wendlin at the beginning of this book. Uh, we are also following Manon and Dorian, as well as the 13 witches, as they are also on the hunt for something. <laughs> Basically, all of these characters are on a quest for something or someone or some people. Um, so yeah, quite a few POVs, but at the same time, they are all very interesting. So yeah, quite a few POVs, but at the same time, it's not too many in my opinion. I'm not feeling like I'm getting things mixed up necessarily because all of these people are in very distinctive places and they are also very distinctive characters with their own personalities. But yeah that's gonna be it for now. I just kind of wanted to give you guys like an overview of how this book is going so far but I am really loving it even though I've only read 75 pages and I will update you guys when I have an update. Morning guys, it is Sunday. Um, I didn't really feel the need to update you guys at all yesterday just because I've just been kind of working through this book and yeah I didn't have much to say. Um, but right now I am on page 298 and that is chapter 5. I'm actually a little ahead of schedule. Um, of trying to read about like 140 pages a day, which is really great. I won't really have time to read much during the day today, um, but I'll be reading um, once I get home tonight. And I do have a couple of things that I wanted to discuss. So for one thing, I have already been tabbing so much. There's, I mean, I don't know, you can barely see, but there have been so many things that I want to tab and so many things that I want to underline. Um, basically, when I annotate books, I always just use one color 
of um, like a felt tip pen and this one kind of matches the color of the cover that's what I tend to do and yeah I've just been underlining so much um, because there's just so much information that's so important right now I'm at about the 30% mark at this point and so the whole first part of this book has been paced kind of weird because I feel like some chapters I'm like flying through because they're action scenes or they're really interesting and then other chapters I feel like I'm kind of struggling through to be quite honest. Yeah the pacing's just not very consistent right now which is like a little bit tedious to read but where I left off I feel like the pacing is finally starting to pick up permanently if that makes sense like I feel like it's definitely more consistent like in the last 50 or 75 pages or so that I've read so yeah I'm just hoping that the pacing stays really good because I have been enjoying the last chunk or so of the book that I've been reading also there is a character that has come back into the story that Brittany the Bibliophile actually predicted and it's so crazy to me when this character actually showed up like I literally like sat back and I was like what like it's just so crazy although like this character isn't back in the way that I thought they would be but it's still very interesting and really crazy yeah I will update you guys when I have an update hey guys what's up it is Monday evening and I read quite a bit of Kingdom of Ash since I last spoke to you so I am on page 503 and that is chapter 59. I think that's a little bit past the halfway mark which is really exciting. There is a lot of things happening in this book right now. One thing that I'm really appreciating is that Sarah J Mass wrote this book in a way that more of the main characters are able to come together a lot sooner than I thought they would. Because this book is almost a thousand pages, I kind of assumed that she was going to wait until like page like 800 or so to finally get all these main characters together and for them to fight a battle together. But I was actually surprised to see that around the 400 page mark was when she decided to bring these characters together. There are some characters that are in other areas of Adelon still, but I'm glad that the bulk of the main characters are fighting together against Erewhon and his forces. I'm still just like underlining and tabbing so much of this book. You probably can't really tell, but I have so many tabs going on um, for just so many different events. I also have some really great quotes that I'm loving. So basically without spoiling anything, Aelin goes through something pretty traumatic in like the first 250 to 300 pages or so of this book, which that's not a spoiler because I feel like Aelin always goes through something really traumatic in these books. Um, but basically she gets out of that situation and she's, you know, seeing the beauty of the world again. And so she says, Beauty, there was still beauty in this world. Stars could still glow, could still burn bright, even buried under the earth. And then a paragraph after that, she says, rattle the stars, she promised to do that. And rattle the stars is a very major quote um, of the Throw Glass series, and I love that. And then another paragraph later, she says, beauty remained and she would fight for it, it needed to fight fight one last time. And that was on page 330 in case you're curious. Uh, then another quote I really loved is on page 493 and it says, death had been her curse and her gift and her friend for these long, long years. She was happy to greet it again under the golden morning sun. I love that. That's kind of as they're getting ready for um, yet another battle. Um, this book is basically all battles and it's it's definitely a war book. Um, I mean, some of the other installments are obviously centered around this war as well, but I mean, the entirety of this book is different battles and different perspectives and things like that for the most part. But I do think overall that the pacing is a lot better. I feel like I'm not getting as bogged down by like any one perspective or any chapter or anything like that whereas earlier like I said um I did feel like some chapters were a bit tedious for me to get through I feel like now we're getting a really good balance of action and downtime between those action scenes which is really good epic finales like this are a huge commitment to get through and so yeah I'm just kind of 
being patient with myself and that's also why I started this book right on the first of the month so that I could give myself as much time as possible to read this book and to get this vlog done. You know I mentioned that Aelin goes through something traumatic in this book and once again I love Sarah J Mass's ability to write about um, Aelin's like PTSD and how she's dealing with these events. I just think it's really realistic to what people in our world and our lives go through and and um, it's just really cool to see themes like that in a fantasy book. So that's gonna be it for now. I will probably update you guys tomorrow, but I'm not gonna make any guarantees. So <laughs> I'll just update you guys when I have something to talk about. Hey guys, it is Wednesday afternoon slash evening. Um, I didn't really feel the need to update you guys yesterday. I have made quite a lot of progress on Kingdom of Ash. I am on page 804 so I will definitely be able to finish this tomorrow. I don't think it's feasible for me to try to finish this before I go to bed tonight um just because I have like 800 I mean <laughs> I have not 800 I have like 100 and like 80 pages left of the book and I just don't think that's possible for me to uh, read all of that tonight um but I did have quite a few things that I want to discuss before I finish the book and before I do like my final update and review and all of that. One thing that I find really refreshing and really interesting um, in this installment especially is seeing these main characters actually struggle in these war battles. Um, we've had quite a few battles in like Queen of Shadows and Empire of Storms and there's been some slight struggles here and there but really in Kingdom of Ash is when we start to see how dire the situation really is especially on like Adian and Lysa side in Terrison. Um, there's numerous times where they almost lose battles and they're, you know, losing people left and right. And, um, but luckily they'll get some kind of relief um, from different characters or um, different circumstances. But you really get um, a real sense of how desperate the situation is and how powerful Erewhon and his army is. You know, throughout this book, I have overall just been really annoyed with Adian. I I loved his character. I, I'm trying to think when he was first introduced. I want to say maybe Air of Fire. I, I love how similar he is to Aelin and of course he's her cousin um, so that makes sense and I, I don't know I just loved everything about him and I was loving the relationship kind of building between him and Lysandra um, especially in Empire of Storms. But in this installment, man, he is just so frustrating to read from. Like, his POV, I mean. Like, he's just so awful to Lysandra, and, like, for really no reason. I mean, I can understand kind of where he's coming from and why he feels betrayed, but that just, it just doesn't warrant what he does and what he says to Lysandra. Like, there's literally a scene where he, like, throws her out into the snow basically and like just tells her to go away when she's like doing so much for um the war and for you know the Terrison side of the war and I just feel like she's not being appreciated as much as she should be and not just by Adian but also Darrow who I haven't talked about in any of these vlogs but he I think his first appearance was in Empire of Storm. If you don't remember he's essentially one of the lords of Terrison and he does not respect Aelin at all. He does not see her as the Queen of Terrison. He just sees her as some assassin and he doesn't really give a shit about her. And so from the get-go, he's very rude to her. But in this installment, like, he is so annoying. I hate him so much. Like, he can just choke, honestly. Like, he's just so condescending to Adian, Lysandra, like, everybody. But it's especially from him that it just feels like nobody appreciates Lysandra for what and who she is. He's also really rude to Adian at some points. And it's just so stupid because if it wasn't for Aelin and if it wasn't for Adian or Lysandra, there's no way that Terrison would have won all these battles. Like there's just no way. And there's also no way that Terrison would have an army this large without Aelin. Aelin is the one that got all this help. And it's just so stupid that Darrow just doesn't even see that and he doesn't respect her at all. There was one scene where I thought that Sarah J Maas was gonna kind of have a redemption for Darrow. You know, there's a scene where he's talking to Lysander and Evangeline. And so I thought he was gonna have like a genuine moment with Lysander but no he's he's still an asshole like 
So I feel like there's just no redemption for his character and I hate him. I think I even hate him more than Maeve, which is saying a lot. Um, and speaking of Maeve, I wanted to talk about her character a little bit because she is very conflicting for me personally. I feel myself flip-flopping between really hating her and kind of not hating her and kind of seeing her point of view on things and that's really weird. I think it's very interesting to see how Sarah J Mass wrote her character especially um, in this installment and obviously she is a villain just like Erewhon is. You can truly see Maeve's motivations and sometimes it seems like she's not all that bad. So it's very weird and but it's very interesting to read about. I love reading about villains that have real motivations and that their motivation isn't just to be evil because that's so realistic. When you think about people that are truly evil, they're not doing it to be evil. They're doing it because they think their philosophies and their views and their morals are right. And so they're doing what they think is right. They're not doing what they think is evil. So I just think it's interesting that Sarah J Mass is kind of expanding on her character a bit in this book and I really appreciate that and I kind of like that I'm finding myself flip-flopping between despising her and not hating her so much and pretty much where I left off a lot of shit went down because there's this huge battle going on which I assume is the final battle of the book because like I said, I'm on page like 804 and we're still in the midst of this battle. So I'm assuming that this is it. I will say I'm a little just kind of surprised that we are around the 800 page mark and not all the characters are reunited yet. We basically now have two groups of the main characters, whereas at the beginning of this book, like it was like five groups of characters or so. We've still got a separation with the main characters that I'm disappointed by right now, um, just because I assumed that the final battle would be everyone banding together and everyone beating Erewhon and that's not really what's happening but we do have 180 pages left of the book so we will see. That's really all I want to discuss right now. I know that um, my discussion points have been very passionate today. I don't know this book is just bringing out a lot of feelings in me. I'm still underlining and tabbing so much. I don't know if you can see how many tabs I've used but I've used like a million and I'm underlining so much like there's just so much information in this book and just so many feels happening for me and yeah I'm I'm loving it still. Overall I don't really see myself giving this less than five stars just because it is still such an epic finale. Guys I did it. I finished Kingdom of Ash last night and to say that I feel really accomplished is quite an understatement. You know this book is almost a thousand pages and I'm just so glad that I was able to read this in the time that I gave myself to which was just about six days. Wow <laughs> what a ride this was, what a journey. Uh, overall I do have quite a few conflicting thoughts and feelings about this book so um, from now to the end of the video is just going to be a very general discussion. Again, there's going to be no spoilers, just kind of very general things that I want to talk about with this book. Um, but first things first, I wanted to talk about some quotes that I really loved. So this is page 626 and essentially Gabriel, Gavriel, Gabriel, I'm going to say Gabriel. Um, he, who is he talking to at this point? Oh, he's talking to Kale. Um, because you know Kale has issues with his father and Gabriel is Adian's father and Adian has issues with him because he wasn't there when he was growing up for various reasons but he definitely still has like this grudge against Gabriel. So they're just talking and Kale says I wish I had been so lucky to have you as my father and then it says surprise and something far deeper passed across Gabriel's face. His tattooed throat bobbed. Thank you. Perhaps it is our lot to never have the fathers we wish, but to still hope they might surpass what they are, flaws and all. That quote just like got me, man. Like, you know, I feel like so many of us, we have some kind of familial issue. And so 
Um, this quote just really resonated with me and I feel like would resonate with a lot of other readers. This is another quote that I really love. This is on page 650 and it just says, you will find your majesty that a loyal friend is a rare thing indeed. They are not so easy to sacrifice. And then this is a, another quote that I'm obsessed with. This is on page 685. And this is the scene with Lysandra, Evangeline, and Darrow. As I've said earlier, I hate Darrow. So it just says, the ancient lord stood in the doorway of what seemed to be a study and beckoned them inside. Oh, so basically Darrow wants to speak with both Lysandra and Evangeline. So then he says, it will not take long. He sat upon noting the displeasure still on Lysandra's face. She was done making herself appear nice for men whom she had no interest in being nice to. And I literally put big mood. <laughs> I love that quote so much like I like was laughing so much reading that um so those are like the main quotes that I love so much but there were so many things in this book speaking of Darrow um you know Sarah J Mass did have a redemption for him at the end and yes it was really nice you know because he's finally seeing Aelin for what she is and he's finally respecting her and calling her the queen like she rightfully is but I found myself just rolling my eyes while reading that passage because like I still don't like him and you know he didn't even I feel like he didn't even genuinely apologize for how he treated Aelin. He was just like oh now I recognize that you are the queen. You know like she did so much stuff for Terrison and she is the rightful um heir to the throne and all that but yeah it was just like mm, it was a redemption but it wasn't like a great one and yeah so Darrow is still annoying and I do not like him. So I mentioned earlier that a big flaw of this book is the pacing. This book definitely has major pacing issues. I would say the first like 300 pages of this book are quite slow and a bit tedious to get through and I can understand why that is. I can see that Sarah J Mass is trying to build all of these scenes so that when we get to the big battles and the big climax at the end that it will be even more satisfying but it was still just tedious to get through at some points and it reminded me of the pacing issues that I had with Tower of Dawn because in that book as well the first like third of the book was just so slow because once again she was just building the story and building scenes and stuff. So I just think the pacing could have been so much better because I know that she's capable of great pacing. Um, in Queen of Shadows, the pacing is just top notch, I thought, in that book. Um, Air of Fire also has really great pacing and Empire of Storms was a little bit slower, but I still thought that it was well done. I think what also plays into the slower pacing is that even though there are so many battle scenes in this book, the battles are so much more serious this time around and the situation is so dire and desperate and so the battles just weren't as much fun to read if that makes sense um and they just weren't as exciting because they were so grueling for these characters to get through whereas the battle scenes in some of the earlier books were just so fast-paced and so fun to read and also just felt a little bit more light-hearted. So I think overall you do have to go into this installment with plenty of patience. Give yourself a lot of time to get through it but I do think that there's a huge payoff with this book and I will get to that in a minute. Talk about plot twists though in typical Sarah J Mass fashion so many plot twists in this book. I used so many green tabs. That's what I use for like surprising moments or plot twists or things like that. Um, so I do have to say, you know, she totally delivered on that front, just like with especially Queen of Shadows and Empire of Storms. There were a ton of plot twists in that book. Um, so she definitely delivered on that front. You know, some people have talked about the character deaths in this and I'm definitely not going to get into who dies or the circumstances or anything like that but a lot of people have criticized Sarah J Mass because she doesn't kill all characters. Now I have not read the Court of Thorns and Roses series yet but a lot of people have said that apparently in the last book Aka War no one dies and a lot of people were actually frustrated by that because I'm assuming that last book is all about a war as well so you would assume that somebody would die. Um, and so a lot of people have also criticized this book in saying that not enough people die but I think there's plenty of death and grief to go around in this book. Um, there were definitely some characters that when their deaths came around I was truly devastated and I found myself 
tearing up especially at the other characters reactions so I don't know I think there's plenty of death in this and we did finally you know get a scene where everyone was fighting together that's what I wanted out of this book that's all I wanted and we finally got that by like page I don't know 860 or so so definitely took a long time for Sarah J Maas to finally reunite everybody but when it happened it was very satisfying and I loved that scene so much and I did end up really enjoying how the outcome happened and all of that so can we talk about how this entire series apparently takes place over the span of only like 10 or 11 months what how is that possible? How? Like, I feel like so much time passes, especially like Air of Fire is coming to mind because it feels like, you know, Aelin and Rowan were training together for a really long time in that book. Um, also, I mean, just all of these books, it just feels like a lot of time passes. Maybe not so much in Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight, but all the other books, it feels like so much time passes. But literally the whole series takes place in less than a year that just like boggles my mind and it just doesn't make sense also the overall ending i thought was beautifully beautifully done very just a stunning ending honestly um up to the very last line i loved it so much i i, I really did enjoy how sarah j mass um wrapped up all of these characters storylines and all of the different couples that we have going on um my gripe though with the ending is the relationship between Dorian and Manon. I don't really consider this to be a spoiler because I think it's plainly obvious in Queen of Shadows we're getting an inkling of Dorian and Manon and so I think it's obvious that the two of them are gonna get together. The problem that I have with the way that their character arc ended was that I think Dorian deserves better overall to be quite honest. Manon is not the type of person who is ever going to want to settle down and be a queen with him and maybe have children and get married and like all of that. You know she's not that type of person. She's made it plainly obvious to him and there was one scene in particular that really struck me when she straight up told him that it would be a sacrifice to marry him but that she would be willing to do it. And I was like and and Dorian was also like what <laughs> but I just feel like that's such a red flag obviously she doesn't want to settle down with anyone and I also think that Manon also deserves better in the aspect of you know she just needs to be set free and just live her life with Abraxos uh, with the other witches and all the other wyverns and stuff she just needs to go live her life but at the end she's basically like hey I'm gonna go like live my life but I'll come visit you sometimes and I'm like that, that is one thing that I'm kind of disappointed in with that is that I love Dorian so much. Like he is by far one of my favorite characters. Him and Aelin and Rowan I would say are probably my absolute favorite characters of the series. So just to see that his ending wasn't all that happy when you think about it that made me really sad. Like I just feel like he deserves to have someone you know like Yurin is to Kale or like Rowan is to Aelin. Someone who is there for them till the very end, wants to settle down, wants to have a family. I, I think that Dorian and Manon make really good friends with benefits, honestly, truly. I think that's how their relationship works well. I just don't see Manon ever wanting to commit to Dorian for the long term. I just don't see that happening. A gripe that I have with the series overall is that Sarah J Maas does not do a good job of reminding readers of details that we learned in previous books. Um, throughout this whole series I would find myself like questioning who a certain god or goddess is or who a king or queen is and like who they're related to and like she just didn't do a great job of reminding us of those relationships and there were other details here and there that I just felt like I was left out of the loop of. And once I finished Kingdom of Ash I went on the Throne of Glass like fandom wiki and I finally got all of those answers because I didn't want to go onto that website before finishing the book because I was worried I would get spoiled. So yeah overall I did really enjoy this. I am giving it five stars. I don't think I could give this less than five stars. Um, obviously I had some conflicting feelings to share with you guys but I think overall this book is completely worth it and I think that it ends the series on such an amazing high note. Um, I think 
think if I were to rank the books, I would definitely do Queen of Shadows would be my top favorite, Empire of Storms after that. Then I think I would put Kingdom of Ash, then Air of Fire, because Air of Fire and Kingdom of Ash for me are very close in my level of enjoyment. Um, and then after that, I don't really know like how I'd rank the other books, but Tower of Dawn would probably be on the bottom with like the Assassin's Blade. But yeah, I just thought that would be kind of fun to give you guys like my overall ranking of how I enjoyed these books. I am very much looking forward to reading the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Um, I've heard that it may not be as good as Throne of Glass, but a lot of people have very differing opinions about that because they are two very different series apparently. So I am looking forward to that. I am so glad that I shared my reading experience um, of this series with you guys in these reading vlogs. I hope that you enjoyed them and I hope that I encouraged some of you guys to pick up these books because I do think that they are worth it. I think that this is such a cool and interesting YA fantasy series. These characters will always have some such a special place in my heart and I honestly can't wait to read this series many times um, over the next few years or so. I, I think that this is definitely a series that you will pick up more and more the more that you read it. I also loved how perfectly different aspects of the plot and characters came together at the end as well. Sarah J Mass does a really great job of that throughout this whole series. So I think that's gonna be it for my final thoughts about this book and this series and this reading vlog. So I hope that you guys enjoyed and if you did I hope that you would consider pushing that like button and subscribing and if you do don't forget to push that notification bell button below so that you will be notified every time I upload and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!